Yep, Anders and Justice do not like this, and I can't say I blame them a whole lot. But, this is a chance we'll just have to take. Alright, I believe that's four crystals. So, of course, this means we'll be able to summon um, the Architect also as an ally. Right. All right, and we've activated this tower. Let's see what do we have so far. Okay, so yes, here's the architect. He can summon a powerful inferno to scorch an area. The tower of trauma will cause stunning effects, and the tower of flame, of course, will attack with fire. One more tower to go. Up some interesting robes there. I'll see if they're worth wearing or not. This should be easy. Let's see how we get rid of all these stupid hatchlings. Other crystals here. All right, let's look at this armor really quick. I saw an interesting name there. Uh, ooh, first elementary grasp. Ooh, that looks good. We'll take those. That's across the board element damage. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Plus six magic. No, it's not as good as ours. But um, Uthemiel, I believe, was the very was the um, Chief of the Old Gods, and led the first Blight, I believe. Oh, another lovely ogre. Let's see. Life. Bolt. Gotta get rid of these lesser enemies first here. Okay, let's see. Petrify. Yes, got him that time. Let's take him down, guys. Let's get Let's fight him more dying, class you. Almost. Got him. Let's see if he's holding a crystal. Nope. But there's one there. On. Excellent. Any other bodies around here? Nope. All right, last tower. <laughs> and my game crashed again, so I'm back. Once again, saving often has rescued me from a lot of time and effort here. That time I didn't use any big spells, though, so I'm not quite sure why the game got all frustrated that time. Let's see. Ice. Bolt. Yeah, oh, man. I just can't really get over how disgusting those things are. Alright, that one, that one, and no crystals there. Let's see what's at the bottom here. 
Is it just me, or do you actually think you have a chance? Bolt. Lightning. Grease lightning. I hate it when they get all fidgety like that with their legs. That's the worst part. And the thing is, I'm not in a, I'm not arachnophobic. I actually like spiders. I like them because they kill bugs that annoy me. But even so, those enemies just ugh. It's either you or me, and it isn't going to be me. Is the battle over yet? Only one shall stand. Man, this is a bit int intense. Or do you actually have a chance? You die. Stay still. Hey, what do you know? Vex has actually got to level up one more time here. Okay, crystals, crystals, crystals. Have a locked chest here. Oh wait a minute, we gotta level up Vexus. Let's just go pure magic now. And what's the second hand of winter? I like cold spells. Ha, huh, cold spell, it. get it? What can Sorry. I All right, Nathan, open the door. The uh, thing. Ah, final crystal. Good. So it's a good thing to have a rogue along to get that last one. And flesh pod with another crystal. Yes. Awesome. Alright, I think that'll do it. We now have pretty much a maximum amount of weapons that we'll be able to use against the Broodmother now. Quest complete. And sure enough, we're out of the fortress, and now we're going into some tunnels. What's it called? Ah, the nest. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, it's a good thing I restarted, because the load times are now a lot more reasonable. There she is. Alright, now time for the final battle. Now the pieces fall into place. The Grey Warden comes, the instrument of the Father. Oh, and the father, he is but a shadow. Oh, how my children protect me. How they love me. I have told you many times, mother. I am not the father. I am simply the architect. It does not change what you are. You took away that beautiful music. Left us with nothing. It was a mistake to free you. It has left you with madness. I am truly sorry. The Architect is intending to free the Darkspawn, and I trust him. Ah, but perhaps the Warden would like to hear how it was that the Father began the Blight. You want the source of the Archdemon? The one who brought all our kind to the surface? Here he is! I was correct. All of these creatures are irredeemable fiends. Ah, there it is then. Unfortunate. I did find the old god, Athemiel. But I did not wish another blight. I attempted my joining ritual. My hope was that this would free all Darkspawn, unravel the curse from its source. Alas, I was unlucky. Do you even think about the repercussions of your actions? Is it not the way of the Grey Wardens to do what must be done, in the name of combating the Blight? The Blight is a menace, both for your people and for mine. To end it requires sacrifice and risk. 
and how lonely the father was. How terrible to be the outcast, the outsider. He claims he wishes the Darkspawn to be free, but what he truly wants is to correct them. However you feel about what I have done, the mother is mad. She cannot be allowed to... Be gone, Shadow. You cannot harm the mother any more than you already have. And now the hero is alone. Oh. Mother knows your ways. You will not let her be, no. Not after what she's done. So it must end. It all must come crashing down! Perhaps we will hear the song again when we die. Oh, let it come. Let it come! Whoa. Ugly. Dark spot. Destroy the okay. Well, I take that back. I thought Uthomio was the god of the first light, but actually that was the one that Vexus slew up on Fort Draken. So here's the t power of the tower of fire, I believe. Come now, defend yourself! Summon the Tower of Healing. I'm sorry, that last one was the Architect. Looks like we can't cast any spells right now, because the Mother has us neutralized. And the Mount of Lyrium. I'm getting some more back now. Probably should get rid of some of these. Uh, poor Nathan got killed there. Need Anders to keep us alive here. The thing I really don't like about Broodmothers is the, all these tentacle attacks. Insert joke here, I guess. Hey, Anders got to level up at the last minute. Let's do some stunning here. Nice. See if we can do a fireball without crashing our computer. There we go. That's a lot of enemies over there. Let's see if we can zap them all. There we go. Die, die, die. There we go. Okay, now we can focus on the mother for a while. Uh, I tried to petrify her, and I'm not surprised it didn't work. Drink another mana potion. Screech, screech. Ah, uh, she's got me neutralized again. It's very annoying. Pfft. It's gonna take a few moments, folks. It's just me and Anders pounding away on her now. Scream! Scream! Time for some fun. In the wrong place. Let's get started. Uh, she's almost dead. 
Oh, uh, now she's win. got her minions out again. I think I'm just gonna focus on her, though. Since she's close enough to dying now. Come on! Hey! <laughs> I actually managed to petrify her once. Awesome. It's nice when a spell like that works even on the final boss. Come on, Anders. I'm down for the count here. Take her out. We can do it. Almost. Got her. Go Vexus! And that's the end of the brood mother. After the death of the mother, the remaining darkspawn forces scattered and fled back into the deep roads. The raids on Amaranthine came to an abrupt end. The architect apparently kept his word, gathering his remaining disciples to follow the rest of their kind back underground. Those Grey Wardens in other nations were appalled to hear of the architect's continued existence, but were unable to track him down despite years of effort. Some within the Order have claimed that the Architect's survival guarantees another blight, and yet the Deep Roads have lately been quieter than any can recall. Most have resigned, resignedly decided that it is now in the Maker's hands. Word of the Grey Warden's heroic salvation of Amaranthine spread like wildfire. When the magnitude of those losses at Vigil's Keep came to light, Sympathy drove generous donations from all over Ferelden into the region's coffers. Amaranthine was restored to her former glory within a year. Vigil's Keep in five. Because of the Warden's support for law and order in Amaranthine, Constable Aiden and his men were able to distribute the smuggler's goods to the battered survivors in the grueling days that followed the Darkspawn defeat. The Darkspawn messenger, set free after joining the Wardens in the Battle of Amaranthine, struck out on his own. The city soon buzzed with stories of a cloaked but lisping figure who aided travelers in danger. At the same time, reports of isolated cases of darkspawn disease emerged. No one connected the two. The war devastated the farmholds of the Arling, but the land survived. In time, opportunity would attract settlers from other regions, as always. Dirk, one of the pranksters behind the Blight Orphan scam was fortunate enough to survive the Battle of Amaranthine. The unconditional generosity of the Blight Orphan's mysterious benefactor inspired him to establish a legitimate charity dedicated to children orphaned in the attack. His sweetheart, Melissa, eventually bore him two rascals. So it turns out that that Blight Orphan w uh, fund was indeed a scam, but in the end, looks like it turned out for the best. Vigil's Keep stood alone against a horde of Darkspawn. The Mother's forces outnumbered the Vigil's defenders many times over. But the sturdy dwarven walls proved impervious to any boulder an ogre could throw. The Vigil's soldiers, clad in silverite, each felled a dozen Darkspawn before they died. The Vigil held one night, then two, then a week, and eventually the attacking hordes broke upon her walls. The Keep developed an almost mythic reputation. The few survivors immortalized in song and legend. The Vigil became a trading hub that would eventually eclipse the city of Amaranthine, with traders reassured by guards continually patrolling the Pilgrim's Path. 
but prosperity bred scheming and treachery behind, between merchants and nobles, testing the commander's patience for years to come. Peace allowed the wardens to replenish their numbers. Soon, Vigil's Keep bore a capable army with wardens at its core. From their ranks emerged new heroes to challenge threats to Amaranthine and all of Ferelden. Though taxi, through taxis and levies, the, village, the vigil was rebuilt. Years later, Valdric Gla Glavonac stood on the battlements and pronounced that the defenses were acceptable. He would never speak more highly of any human engineering. <laughs> Dark whispers of conspiracy against the wardens fell silent after a rash of accidents and disappearances culminated in the apparent suicide of Ban Esbarella. The nobles of Amaranthine remained dutiful. Some even suggest they were cowed into submission. So sure enough, the uh, conspiracy against Vexus was pretty much crushed. Among, many, among the many legends that the Vigil spawned was one of the great heroes of the next age, a shepherder turned soldier by the name of Sir Alec the Valiant, who eventually founded an order of knights that lasted a thousand years. Dwarvik Glavonak further refined his lyrium sand explosives, but left the warden's employ after Kunari mercenaries tried to assassinate him. Although the dwarven bombardier took his secrets with him, the learned say he left clues for others to follow in his footsteps. The vigil soldiers, wearing the distinctive silverite armor that Master Wade crafted, came to be known as the Silver Order. Under the tutelage of the wardens, the Silver Order developed into one of Ferelden's most revered military forces, a lasting memory of the Vigil's famous commander. With, Vel with Velana and the architect gone from the region, the Pilgrim's Path began to see traffic again. The massacre of the militiamen and the merchants, however, led to hostilities between the neighboring human settlements and any Dalish clans that passed by. One human villager soon kidnapped and murdered a Dalish child. The clans reacted by giving the Wending Wood a wide berth. But both sides knew at some point the elves would re will return for revenge. A few years after Kal Harol was emptied of Darkspawn, Orzammar began sending expeditions to rediscover the knowledge of smithing that had been lost within the Taig. Eventually, House Helmi decided that Kal Harol was too important to be abandoned. At a, treacherous, at a tremendous cost of dwarven lives, they cleared the tunnels leading to Kal Harol of all Darkspawn, making the road between Orzammar and the fortress safe again. Kal Harol was reclaimed for Orzammar once and for all. As promised, Valdric and Dwork Dworkin presented Orzammar's Shaperet with the stone marker that told how Kal Harol's Cathlis had taken up arms against the Darkspawn. The Commander of the Grey was invited to Orzammar as a guest of honor at a feast commemorating the defenders of Kal Harol. The Shaper read the names of the castless off the marker, then presided over a ceremony to return them to the stone, as befitting warriors of their stature. In time, the Arling began to forget the tales of apparitions in the Black Marsh, and ever so slowly settlers drifted into the region. Scholars said that the Vale was still thin, and thus the area was still dangerous, but the people only cared that there were no longer frightening whispers in the shadows. The village was slowly rebuilt. Twice the Baroness's mansion was rebuilt and occupied, once by a wealthy merchant and another by an Orlesian mage. Both died mysteriously. Afterwards, the mansion was torn down completely and the site left untouched. Anders remained with the Grey Wardens a few years longer, training the Order's next generation of mages. But when the Circle Tower called on him to deliver a, a lecture on the nature of the architect, much to the Templar's dismay, Anders told the Commander of the Grey that his time with the Wardens was over. And yet, not two months later, Anders returned to the Order. Ever after, the Wardens were his home and lasting companions. And unfortunately, this particular point was retconned in Dragon Age 2, so there's a little bit of a hiccup here in the story. It turns out that um, after a few years with the Wardens, Anders, in fact, did leave. 
Um, and actually not just a few years either. I think it's much less than that. I think it was more, it's, it was retconned to about um, a year and a half, I think, is when he ended up leaving. So in Dragon Age 2, he shows up again, but he's no longer considered part of the Order. When the walls of Vigil's Keep were breached, the surviving defenders watched in horror as a section of stone collapsed upon Velana. When the, rubber, when the rubble was later cleared, however, there was no body. Velana was just gone. So, we don't know what happened to her. Over the next years, Nathaniel dedicated himself to the Order and to clearing the, the blemishes on his family name. After saving, saving Terran Fergus Kuzlin from a bandit attack, a portion of amaranthine was returned to the to the house. Nathaniel passed the holding to Delilah. Oh, it's his sister's name, um, Delilah's son. And when a new castle was eventually built there, a statue of Nathaniel was erected in its courtyard. Justice served the Grey Wardens for many years, remaining in touch with Aura, the widow of Kristoff. She grew uncomfortable with the body's decay, however, and the day she told just and the day she told Justice she could see him no longer was the day he left the order. Justice wished his comrades well. Then Kristoff's body slumped to the ground dead. Aura finally had a body to mourn. If the spirit itself remains alive, it has not shown itself. And it has not shown itself yet. But in Dragon Age 2, we find out where he has been all this time. It was Sigrun who led the charge against the Darkspawn when Vigil's Keep was attacked. Once again, she had an army behind her. And once again, they fought the Darkspawn with no hope of survival. This time, though, Sigrun did not flee. And did she die or survive? We don't know. At Vigil's Keep, Ogren rallied a last-minute defense of the gate, taking on two ogres simultaneously to allow others time to regain the courtyard. <coughs> Excuse me. He eventually passed out from blood loss, and when he awoke weeks later, no one was more surprised than he to discover he had been credited as a hero. Ogren continued to regale young warden recruits with tales of his prowess in both battle and bed. His drinking games prompted at least one recruit to declare that she'd rather reattempt the joining than lift another mug. Felsi returned to Vigil's Keep several times to see Ogryn, usually bringing their toddler as well. Ogryn's inability to act seriously wore on her, however, and her visits dwindled, then stopped altogether. If Ogryn missed her or his child, he never showed it. As for the savior of Ferelden, he did not remain as commander of the Grey for long. The Darkspawn were no longer a real concern, the Blight was well and truly over. It was time for him to move on. Some claim the commander headed west into Orlais, chasing after the dark-haired sorceress who had fought alongside him during the Blight. Whether he found her or not, he certainly did not return to Vigil's Keep. So once more, Vexus sets off in search of Morgan. So this ends the expansion of Dragon Age Awakening. For those of you who have come with me from uh, the beginning of this uh, Let's Play series, I, my dear thanks for, to all of you. Um, it was fun getting to play through this expansion one more time. And of course, uh, we are not fully done yet. There is one small piece left to do, and that is Dragon Age The Witch Hunt which uh, we will do uh, just after the credits here are finished in the next video. So, uh, until we pick up the story again with Vexus uh, still on the quest to find Morrigan, his love, uh, I will leave you with these people who are responsible for bringing about the production of this uh, sizable expansion. So, until next time, fellow adventurers, take care.